Today I wanted to go over some of the really cool and useful Xorg utilities that are out there for you guys to use. I also want to cover some not so useful, some, some strange Xorg programs that exist that you may or may not know are out there. To get started, let me switch over to my desktop here and I'm going to open up this terminal here and I will zoom in. One of the Xorg utilities I use on a somewhat regular basis is xprop. If I do a man page for xprop, so man xprop, let's read the manual. This is a property displayer for the x11 window system. It does have a lot of flags and options. It's a pretty substantial man page if you actually wanted to read it. Uh, the only thing I ever do with xprop, to be honest, is actually just run the command xprop and then my cursor turns to an x and then if i click a window such as this terminal window it gives me the properties of the window you can see i get the desktop the window manager state the locale name the window manager class which can be useful sometimes of course the window manager name is very useful that's typically what i use xprop for if i open a program especially in a tiling window manager say i install you know somebody's tiling window manager edition of their linux distribution and say i open a terminal and i don't know what terminal that is because there's no title bars or anything in a tiling window manager i can simply run xprop click on the terminal and it will return the window manager name of that terminal. So xprop is really cool. And let me clear the screen here. Another one I use all the time is xset. So if I do man xset, this is a, another x11 utility. This is for user preference and it has a lot of flags and options available as well. To be honest, there are only two things I ever use Xset for. So if I quit out of the man page, typically when I re review Linux distributions, either in a virtual machine or on physical equipment like my test machines behind me, my laptops, a lot of times when I'm testing them, I never want them to lock the screen or go into a screensaver mode. So I often run these two commands. So X set space S space off. And what that does is that disables screen saver blinking. The next command I typically run right after that is X set space dash DPMS. And the minus DPMS turns off the DPMS, the display power management signaling on your machine. X set plus DPMS would turn it back on if you needed to turn it back on. So Xprop and Xset, they are actually really useful utilities you probably need to have installed on your machine. But let's get into some not that useful <laughs> X11 utilities. Let's start with Xcalc. Uh, did you guys know that there is actually an X11 calculator called Xcalc? It's typically not installed as part of the base X11 package on most distros, uh, although sometimes you will find it on distros by default. Xcalc, honestly, it's it's ugly. You can theme it. I, I believe there are additional color schemes out there. People have, have created some for the Xcalc. I think you have to put the, the styles in your X defaults. But honestly, it, it's a pretty hideous looking calculator. And to me, I would just use a standard GTK based calculator like Galculator, which I've got installed on my system. You know, this is a much nicer calculator. <laughs> If you happen to be running GNOME, of course, you have the GNOME calculator. If you happen to be running KDE Plasma, you have Calc with a K. Those are all excellent calculators. I wouldn't swap those out for anything. Another interesting X utility is X clock. And by default, we get this analog clock. I think you can change it over to a digital clock. I've never really played with this utility. Uh, typically, the only time I ever see X clock displayed is people that are actually playing around with the x11 server and x11 utilities sometimes they have things like x clock and x calc opened up on their screens but x clock really not that useful another interesting utility is x edit which is a plain text editor and it's pretty hideous looking just just black text on a white background it has a scroll bar on the left hand side oddly enough Honestly, you probably would never want to use this text editor. If you wanted a graphical 
text editor, you would probably just go with gedit or kate or you know whatever plain text editor shipped on your system, mouse pad, leaf pad. We've got a million plain text editors, GUI plain text editors that are good. And if my options were to use xedit and then a terminal based text editor, I'd probably choose the terminal based text editor every time. You guys know I love Vim, but even if I had to use a nano or have to learn ed or something, I'd probably choose those tools over xedit. Let's talk about some fun utilities for X11. Xeyes. Xeyes is a pair of eyes that follow the mouse cursor. Uh, it's not useful at all, right? There's really no point in having hex eyes. It's just a funny program that really doesn't do anything. It's just a pair of eyes that follow the mouse cursor. Another interesting one is X Fish Tank. So let me launch X Fish Tank and let me switch to a different desktop so you can see what that did. I have fish floating around my monitors now. <laughs> the wallpaper disappeared and now I just have this aquarium on my system. I'm sure CPU just spiked through the roof while all of this is going on. Let me actually kill the X fish tank. Another useful utility that I do use all the time is xkill. xkill, this is just a command line utility that kills X applications. So if I hit enter on that, my cursor changes to a skull and crossbones and anything that I click on it will kill, such as this terminal window. If I click on it, boom, it just killed that terminal window. So let me open up a new terminal and zoom back in. Another not necessarily useful X utility is Xload. So let me launch Xload and I'm gonna give it this uh, flag here, dash update one. I want it to update every one second. And you're not gonna be able to tell exactly what is going on here at first. It's going to take a minute before it actually really starts drawing because it's only adding a bar here. If you can see every one second, it's eventually going to have a graph here of just black bars on white background. And what Xload is graphically displaying here is the CPU load. I'll let that run a few seconds. All right, let me go ahead and kill that. You know what? I'll open up D menu and I'm going to run Xkill. Again, I got the skull and crossbones cursor. Boom, it's dead. Now, a really useful X11 program. I don't personally use it because I don't have a much of a need for a screensaver. But those of you looking for a nice screensaver utility for especially your minimal installations, check out X Screensaver. So if I do X Screensaver and I'm going to give it dash demo, it's actually part of the name, X Screensaver dash demo, because I want to open up this GUI front end to X screen saver because you can actually preview some of these screen savers that you can activate here with X screen saver. The one I really want to highlight to you guys, you guys often ask me about the matrix screen saver you guys see running on my computers. I actually don't use screen savers. That's just C matrix, a terminal application. I just open up a terminal and launch C matrix and <laughs> it's not really a screen saver, but if you wanted a matrix screen saver, X screen saver has one right here. It's called X matrix. And if you wanted to, you could click the preview button. You also have a settings button. If I move my head here so you can actually see that this, there's a settings button right here. If you click that, you can adjust the frame rate. You can adjust the font size. You can play around with it a little bit. And of course you can preview it, hit the preview button and we get a little test of the screensaver. I'm going to let this run just for a second so you can kind of see the effect. The default settings is a little too busy for me. That's a little bit too much as far as the font. So me personally, I would go into the settings. I would lower the frame rate too. I really don't care about the frame rate on my screensaver. I would probably, I don't mind the large font, but the density is way too dense as far as too much text on the, the screen. So I would change that a little bit. Now, if I hit preview, let's see if this looks a little better. Yeah, and I like this a lot more. It's not quite as dense. I could even back that up uh, a little bit more 
and, and make that text even less dense. But no, I, I'm not actually currently using X Screensaver on my system here on my main machine. Probably the most common X11 utility that is installed by default on many systems, of course, is Xterm. You guys know Xterm. It's the X11 terminal emulator. Let me clear the screen. It's a fantastic terminal emulator because it's very old. It's quite bloated. It has, you know, like 100,000 lines of code to it, but it supports virtually everything you want to do inside a terminal. So Xterm is a pretty cool terminal. Uh, I've actually used it as my default terminal. A really neat X11 program that I actually didn't know existed until a couple of days ago was XVKBD. So this is your X virtual keyboard. And let me get out of floating mode. You guys can see this is just your standard on-screen keyboard. I personally don't know anybody that would use it because it seems like the default virtual uh, like on-screen keyboard that most distributions ship with is called onboard so i doubt too many people would ever use the xvkbd program but it is available to you the last thing i want to show you is this interesting program called xzoom and as you can probably guess by the name xzoom zooms in on part of your screen so it's actually zooming in actually on my far left monitor and if I could drag the, the cursor around, will it actually change what it's trying to zoom in on? And it looks like it's kind of wigging out on me as I move the terminal window around. And let me close that. I'll relaunch it. If I zoom in, maybe on this section here, if I just click on it, oh, wow. <laughs> It zooms way in. Actually, it zooms in at several different screen resolutions. I'd have to re read the man page on XZoom if it has one. I don't know if it does. If I do a man XZoom. Yeah, so you can change quite a bit of stuff here. It's got some flags and options that are available to you if you actually wanted to take the time to read that. XZoom, I've never really used it, but it does look like it could be a useful program for certain use cases. So this was just a quick video demonstrating, oh, about 10 or 12 various X11 utilities that you may or may not have ever heard of before. Some of them I find quite useful. I use Xprop and Xsit and Xterm and Xkill all the time. Uh, obviously, most of the other ones are just for fun. You probably are never going to use things like XIs or X Fish Tank, uh, other than maybe if you wanted to include it in a screenshot, maybe over at r slash Unix porn. Before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This show was produced by Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Chris, Chuck, DJ Donnie, Dylan, George, Heplo, Nate, LibreQuest, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode you just watched wouldn't have been possible. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. I also need to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all of my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is community sponsored. You guys sponsor this channel. No corporate sponsors here on DistroTube. If you'd like to help support my work, consider doing so. You'll find me over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.